All right, first thing I've got to do is get my little Ubiquiti switch back here. It's a little PoE, one gigabit per second switch, replaced with this guy. Right, this will not only deliver uh, 10 gigabits per second on every single one of the ports, but this guy also does the 802.3 BT PoE standard, which can deliver up to 100 watts per port, which makes one of the most impressive things about this switch, not only the switch, but check out the power brick for this guy. Thing is massive just because of the giant PoE uh, demand that they equip this switch to handle. It's also a great time to clean up some of these bright yellow cables that make you scratch your head and go, why did I use something like this in a, in a nicely decorated area to run to a wireless access point? Uh, also, little known fact, every single one of these books I either wrote, co-wrote, or wish I wrote. There we go, 10 gigabit per second switch on the bookshelf. All right, I've logged into the Ubiquiti interface because I need to find that guy. There he is, right there, and adopt and upgrade him. Click on that, uh, yeah, that's fine. Now you can see the other 10 gigabit per second switch, which is sitting over in the rack right up here, as well as the one that I just unplugged that's sitting there gray, it is down. While we're waiting for that guy to update, let me go fill in the network diagram with the new IP addresses. 10 gigabit per second switch in the rack is dot 188. 10 gigabit per second switch on my bookshelf is dot 180, and we can flip those over to DHCP reservations a little bit later. So next step of this adventure, I picked up one of these. It is a Sonnet Solo 10 gigabit per second ethernet adapter to USB 3.1, which the beauty of this is I'll be able to take my laptop over there and test the 10 gig connection in the MDF and then come back here and test the 10 gig connection because I'm not sure that I have CAT 6 and 6A cable in the wall, which is, which is required, at least per the spec, to do 10 gig ethernet. But I've always wondered, and this is this will give me the chance to test it, what will 10 gig do if I use just a CAT 5E cable? Will it still get the performance? And if so, over what distance? All right, well, I'm tucked over here in the corner of my home MDF. I figured if we we're going to test the performance of 10 gigabit per second video editing across the network, we better start locally. So I have a completely non-scientific setup going on. I've got my Ubiquiti 10 gigabit per second switch. You can see the bright white cable going down here to a Synology with the 10 gigabit per second network card. The bright white light tells me it's running at 10 gigabit per second. I also have my uh, MacBook Pro sitting right here with a... Sonnet Solo 10 gigabit per second Thunderbolt 3 uh, Ethernet adapter. So I figured while I was here, I also would love to test the performance of a CAT 6A cable, which they always say you have to use that for 10 gig Ethernet, compared to a, a, a CAT 5E cable. And honestly, I, I'm not too sure what to expect because there's so many variables here that could be going wrong. Um, now, I'm using, you can see it on the screen here, iPerf to do the test. I've got iPerf running on Synology. It's a typical network performance testing. So let's, let's start off with the CAT 6A cable. Get this thing connected. All right, I'm going to zoom it on the screen right now. I'm just going to do an iPerf straight client test, which is basic 10 seconds TCP traffic. And it looks like I'm getting, I can see the lights blinking up there on the switch, uh, somewhere between uh, three, four, five, it looks like on average 4.76 gigabits per second. So let's swap out this CAT 6A. And throw in my cat 5e <laughs> give that twist a little tug there just for good measure plug it into the adapter 10 gigabit per second light came on I'll hit the up arrow and try the test one more time now oh, look at that looks like about whoa four six three four you know, I'm honestly not seeing much difference here. Now, granted, this isn't running at 10 gigabits per second. Is it the, the Synology? Is it the cable? Is it this solo adapter? It, it could, is it the hard drive? There's so many variables that could slow this down. So I'm only getting about half of what I would expect. But comparing the CAT 6A to the CAT 5E cable, at least for this short distance, not much difference that I'm seeing there. 
You know what? I'm gonna move this Synology into my office and see if I've got a straight connection to my desktop computer on 10 gig. See if I get any better performance. All right, what I've done is I've moved the Synology to the bookshelf. I've built my own little self-contained network here with the Synology plugged into the 10 gig switch, my video editing computer right over there, and an uplink that goes to this one gig switch sitting on top of it, which feeds all of the other stuff that I've got going on. What I want to do is try and take my, my laptop out of it because it's an unknown. And let's see what kind of performance I get from my computer directly to the Synology using iPer first. And then let's do the ultimate test. Let's see if I can edit video across that 10 gigabit per second network. All right, so I want to bring the diagram back up just to make sure we're all on the same page. What I've done is I've taken this Synology out of the MDF and literally moved it right into the office with me. So it's attached to this little closed network here, so I don't have to worry about any of the wall wiring or things like that slowing us down. I assigned this Synology an IP address in VLAN 20, 172.20.0.250. So... I just installed iPerf on my computer, my video editing computer right now. Uh, let's just do a quick test. iPerf, uh, and we'll do uh, dash C, 172.20.0.250. That's from my computer to the Synology, and this is gonna use the, the, local, the local subnet right here. And let's just hit enter, see what happens. Interesting. That is actually not any better than the laptop that I used before. Um, okay, well that, that I guess l eliminates the laptop and the adapter out of the picture. Uh, let's, I want to send multiple streams at a time. Let's do uh, 20 streams at a time. It's one of the, the cool things with iPerf that you can do. Is sometimes if you just send a single stream, it could hit throttle limits or things like that. Um, we're looking better, but I would say we're capping out at about 5, maybe 6 gigs per second. Uh, which is decent, and at this point, I'm going to have to probably turn uh, turn that that limit on the Synology. I mean, it's a home grade uh, uh, device, so I'm impressed that it can get above five, uh, much less you know get get even closer to ten uh, gigabits per second. But the big question is, does video editing work across a uh, what we'll just say a ten gig or five gig connection with Ubiquity and Synology? as the backend support. To test that, I'm gonna bring up Camtasia. I know it's not the, the crazy video editing software that a lot of people use, uh, but it's what I use. And so, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna size this just right. I'm gonna grab uh, a window that is literally going straight to that Synology. You can see I'm using that uh, VLAN 172.20.0.250 right there. Uh, and this is actually uh, some video files from my PC build uh, this last week. So one is about one and a half gigs, one is two gigs, and I can tell you, because I've tried it, that would not work to edit that over a one gig network. Look at that. Usually it's it's sitting there, it's it's loading, 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 trying to bring it in. Looks like it's it's loading the other file. I'm gonna try adding that to the timeline. Hey, that's good. That's really good, actually. I would never, it would, I mean, it would have frozen, the app would hang. Uh, anything like that. I'm, I'm curious if I, you know, uh, take this, control X, kind of cut it out of there. Looks like we got some loading going on, spinning. Okay, that was a hang. Ah, but I'm wondering if it's because it's trying to load this video clip in at the same time. Um, I'm saying this is pretty good. Moving back and forth here, so I am. So this would be running across that 10 gig network. I'm, I'm glancing behind me at the uh, at the switch; it's blinking like crazy. So, so this is this is using the 10 gig network, doing uh, doing video editing over it. Not too bad. Let's drag that to the timeline. Uh, pretty good. I would say, still the 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 jury's out. This this is literally the first test I've done with this, but. I would say the results are looking pretty good doing video editing over a Ubiquiti and Synology 10 gigabit per second network. I would count this right now as a success. I'll post updates in the video description if I run into anything, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list all the equipment that I'm using because I know many other YouTubers and video editors are out there. Um, it was a pretty cost-effective way of setting up this network, so I'll put all that in the description for you as well. Obviously, this is a uh, link to an Amazon affiliate account, so help support this channel. Buy some stuff through there, and that will help me out in all the builds that we're doing. But that being said, I'm pretty excited to kick the tires on this network and see how this thing runs 
over the long term. For now, I hope this has been informative for you and let's keep it simple.